Welcome. Welcome to this talk on smooth turbulent flow in pipes, conduits, on channel. My name is Hubert Johnson from the University of Queensland. In this talk, we are going to ask two questions. What is a smooth turbulent flow? What is it for? And what is new science 1913? And how is it relevant? As a starting point, what is a smooth turbulent flow? First and foremost, it is a turbulent flow that is a flow characterized by an unpredictable, chaotic, quasi-random motion with strong mixing properties with a broad range of relevant time on length scales. On, such a flow is observed when the Reynolds number is greater than two to 3,000 under ideal conditions, such as a Reynolds experiment shown on the right, with the Reynolds number defined in terms of the cross-sectional velocity on the equivalent pipe pi diameter, while in industrial pipes, the Reynolds number will typically be greater than 2,000 to 10,000. The second key issue or key point for smooth turbulent flow is that the flow results and the velocity dispersions are function of the Reynolds number only, no effect of the boundary roughness. If we refer to the historical Moody diagram, smooth turbulent flow will be characterized by a lowest friction factor for turbulent Newtonian fluid flow with a darcy Weisbach friction factor F being a function of the Reynolds number only with no effect of the equivalent sound roughness height Ks. The first seminal contribution to smooth turbulent flow is the work of Heinrich Blasius in 1913. He showed that there is a very simple relationship between the Darcy friction factor and the Reynolds number for smooth turbulent flow with a Reynolds number up to 10 to the 5, assuming a 1 over 7 velocity power law. This result is widely recognized and accepted with Reynolds number up to 10 to the 5, even today in 2023. An important development, sometimes called Prandtl's universal, universal law of friction for smooth pipes, is this relationship linking the Darcy friction factor F to the Reynolds number across a broader range of smooth turbulent flow up to 3, 10 to the 6. This development was obtained assuming a logarithmic law of the velocity distribution across the entire cross-section. It's also called the kerman nikolaitz formula. More recently, superpipe data have been able to extend this relationship with Reynolds number up to 10 to the 7, assuming a logarithmic law of the velocity distribution next to the wall, the so-called law of the wall. So how do these expressions compare? This is illustrated on this log-log graph with the Darcy friction factor on the vertical axis on the Reynolds number on the horizontal axis, comparing experimental superpipe data, the small red square, with the Blasius formula, the Prandtl formula, and the superpipe formula. How different are all these expressions? First and foremost, their extents differ. But otherwise, there are relatively small differences altogether. They show no boundary roughness effect for Reynolds number up to 2.7, 10 to the 7. At the same time, the work brings some question about the concept and validity of smooth turbulent flow at very high Reynolds number, 10 to the 8 and above. These results are valid for steady Newtonian turbulent fluid flow and applicable to pipe, conduit, and man-made channels using the hydraulic diameter or equivalent pipe diameter in the definition of the Reynolds number. One would note the key contribution on smooth turbulent flow from German scientist, in particular Ludwig Prandtl, on its on his PhD students, Heinrich Basus, Theodor von Kaman, Johann Nikolaitz. 
in summary, smooth turbulent flow are basically turbulent flow for which the Darcy Vesback friction factor and the velocity distributions are function only of the Reynolds number with no roughness effects. Three flow resistance equations are discussed showing close results valid with Reynolds number up to 2.7 10 to the 7. Interested viewer may read additional references on the topic with some acknowledgement. Thank you very much.